So now Maggie, my wife's pretty small. So what is your uh, height and weight? Five feet four. Well, he can not Five foot four. Oh yeah, we, we never ask the woman's weight. Let's not do that. Okay, error, <laughs> reset, reset the video. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto, your home on the web for the most detailed motorcycle reviews. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here and you find my content useful, I really hope you'll consider subscribing. So I don't know if all of you have noticed this, but there's definitely a trend towards more people adopting smaller, lighter weight adventure bikes. And this makes a ton of sense to me. And if you've ever had to drag a 500 or 600 pound plus bike out of a mud puddle or out of a ditch or try to turn it around on a tight trail, you know that sometimes those big bikes are just too much. Coming in under the magical 400 pound mark with a punchy 43 horsepower single cylinder engine off-road ready suspension, a low of relatively low seat height, decent fuel range, a TFT dash, premium features like a quick shifter and switchable ABS, is the KTM 390 Adventure the best of all the small adventure bikes? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out. So with that, let's go for a ride. So here's how I'm gonna break down this review for you. First, I'm gonna show you the riding position of the bike. I'm gonna show you the passenger position. Then we're going to take a tour around the bike, talk about its important specs, show you the features. Then we're gonna drop the bike down, show you how it is to lift up. Then we're gonna take it out on the highway and show you also off-roading, how it is to do off-road. We're also gonna take it on a freeway at high speeds to see how it does there. Then we're gonna come back here. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of the bike, talk about the competition, and then we're gonna have some final thoughts. All right, so let's look at the riding position and seat height on the 390. So it's a 33.6 inch seat height. I'll put the millimeters here below, but the seat's pretty wide. So here's what that means. Even though that seat height sounds pretty low, it's deceptive. And this is the problem with seat heights listed on motorcycles. The KTM 390 has a pretty wide seat, which makes it a little more comfortable. But the problem is it makes it a lot taller feeling. So even though I'm five foot 10 or about 180 centimeters tall with a 32 inch inseam, fairly tall uh, person, but it's still actually, I can't really flat foot on both sides. It's, it's not tall for me, but I think if you're expecting a really short adventure bike, like something like a Royal Enfield Himalayan, uh, you're not, it's not that. It's actually still pretty tall, almost as tall really as something like a KTM 890 Adventure. So that's something you're definitely gonna have to keep in mind. Now the riding position is very neutral, very good, a lot of leg room, uh, extremely comfortable, no issues there. So let me grab my wife Maggie and we'll show you the passenger position. Okay, so let me have Maggie jump on. Okay, Maggie, come here and uh, jump on the bike. So now Maggie, my wife's pretty small. So what is your uh, height and weight? Five feet four. Well, he can Five foot four. Oh yeah, we, we never ask a woman's weight. Let's not do that. Okay, <laughs> error, reset, reset the video. Um, anyway, she's, not, she's pretty small, right? You get the picture. Uh, now, how, how do you feel? Are you pretty comfortable? How's the seat and how is the, put your feet on the pegs, okay? Oh, where's the pegs? Ah! Okay. Um, hang on. Oh, they're two, yay. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel comfortable. So I anyway, ride a lot, but yeah, she's been a passenger. She's been a passenger before. We used to ride together, um, but you can see from the from the video, you know, the position that we're in. So actually, it's not too bad. I don't feel too cramped. She seems to have enough yeah, room. I have a lot of room. But I think if you're a, if you have a bigger, heavier passenger, it could be somewhat of an issue. All right, dropping and lifting the bike. This is inevitable. If you ride off road, you're going to drop your bike. You're going to have to pick it up. So let's take a look at how the bike drops, how it lays, and then how it is to pick up. So uh, let me grab the camera and kind of show you how the bike is laying. All right, so here from the front of the bike, you can see it's kind of resting on the engine guard there and on that hand guard as well. And then here coming around to this side, yeah, you can see the hand guard and it's probably touching the foot peg and things like that. So yeah, there's a good shot from showing it dropped from the back. Now let's go back on the tripod and show how it is to lift the bike. So lifting the bike really was not bad at all. A lot easier than most any other adventure bike and I'm not even that out of breath. So I would give this like a solid B. All right, let's talk about the important specs of the bike and take you a tour and kind of show you the features. So let's start real quick with the engine. So we've got a 373cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder 
engine. And it has a 12.6 to 1 compression ratio, which is pretty high, so you probably are advised to use uh, 91 or premium octane gas. Let's talk about maintenance really quick while we're at it. So KTM wants you to change the oil every 4,500 miles or 7,500 kilometers. And the valve inspection interval, they want you to do that every 9,300 miles or 15,000 kilometers. So not too bad there on the maintenance. And the valve check, yeah, you're gonna have to take quite a bit of stuff off to get to that. Most people are gonna have that done at a dealership. Let's talk about power and torque. So for power and torque on the 390, we're looking at 43 horsepower or about 32 kilowatts and that power comes in way up at 9,000 rpm and we're going to show that here in a minute when we ride it you really have to rev this thing out to get the horsepower for torque you've got 27 foot pounds of torque at 7,000 rpm but ktm would like to point out that it makes most of that torque even down low in the rpm range now, of course, it's hooked up to a six-speed transmission. It does have a slipper cl clutch, and it uses a chain final drive. Let's take a look at the suspension on this bike. So you have WP Apex open cartridge front forks. They have about seven inches of travel, just under seven inches of travel, and they have adjustments here. Uh, the right leg has a rebound adjustment, and the left leg there has a compression adjustment. So I really like at this price point that you're getting that fully adjustable suspension. I think that's really awesome. On the rear shock, we're looking again at around that seven inches of travel. You do have a preload adjustment and you do also have a rebound adjustment. Now, these bikes are actually known to be set up for a little bit heavier weight and they're sprung pretty stiff. And we're gonna show that in the off-road riding segment. Let's take a look at these brakes. The front brake is a single 320 20 millimeter front disc. It's got a radial mount, four piston caliper, and they're by brace. So that's uh, Brembo's Indian subsidiary company. And the rear brake on the other side there, you've got a single disc. The brakes are very powerful. We're gonna show that in the road test. Very good for a bike of this weight. Uh, for tires and wheels, so, on the 390 Venture, one thing that people like to complain about, why doesn't it have spoked wheels? Well, the truth is that cast wheels can be very good. They can be light, they can be strong. Uh, you get uh, tubeless as well, which is very, very nice because if you get the, the spoke wheels, then people complain about why does it have tubes? So I guess you just can't win. Uh, there's probably reasons they chose not to go with spokes, but I don't know what those are. Now you get a 19 inch front wheel and tire. It's a 190-19 and the back, you get this 17 inch tire and the size let's see here is a 130 80 17 and it comes with tkc 70s which i found to perform very very well for really what is an 80 20 uh, tire now let's talk about some important specs. So the weight, uh, the wet weight is 387 pounds, fully fueled up, which makes it pretty light. Uh, and then you have a load capacity of about 440 pounds. So that means you can put on 440 pounds of cargo and riders before you reach that payload capacity. Fuel tank, 3.8 gallons or about 17 liters. Now you get around 50 to 55 miles a gallon. So you have a fuel range of somewhere around you know, 150, uh, maybe to 200 miles, depending on how you're riding. So pretty good, not bad there. Okay, so we've covered the specs. Now let's take a tour. Let's just, why don't we start at the back of the bike? So you've got an LED uh, tail. You know what, let me turn the bike on here actually and turn on one of the turn signals so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see the LED rear tail light, incandescent turn signals. Uh, you've got some nice grab handles here. Working our way around, you can see the passenger pegs fold down. I believe they're removable. Yep, they unbolt from the frame. The frame is a two-piece frame, so you can actually unbolt the subframe, which is nice in case it were to get damaged. Uh, okay, now I've got to point this out here while I'm at it. Do you see what's wrong here? The angle of the peg, look how canted forward that is. That's insane. Now, when we ride off-road, this is a really big problem. I'm going to show that in the off-road riding segment, which, due to the magic of YouTube, I've actually already filmed that segment. So we're kind of do the, doing this in reverse, but the, the angle is wrong. They somehow got that wrong. So it puts your it puts your foot like angled down and I don't get that. Not a problem on a street, but when you try to stand up off road, horrible. Really something I don't like about this bike. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the US models and I maybe some of the other models in other countries come with these crash bars, which is a really nice thing because you know, other adventure bikes, you have to spend hundreds of dollars to add stuff like that. You can see the two piece seat here. You can see the fuel tank, fuel tank release. Let's work our way around to the front. So you can see you've got these nice kind of mirrors here that stick out pretty good. Plastic handguards, which are actually pretty strong. You can see the windshield, the headlight. It's got this cool kind of alien shape running light, which is kind of nice. 
Uh, looking down here, we've talked about the tires, wheels, and suspension. Let's take a look kind of a little bit closer at the motor and stuff here. So, looks like somebody did an oil change. You can see there's a little bit of oil residue there attracting the dirt. Um, so you've got... The skid plate is kind of interesting because you see you've got this metal thing sticking out under here. I think it's to make room for uh, the header pipe there. And you can see the ground clearance of the bike, which is okay. It's just not great, but it's okay. And the skid plate is plastic, but it actually seems to be pretty sturdy. Only other thing I would show on this side would maybe be the exhaust. Now this bike has an aftermarket end cap. This part is stock, but he changed out this part for a better sound. Let's take you on a tour of the controls and dashboards. You can see the nice big tubular handlebar, which being a KTM, you can adjust. Uh, and you've got adjustable clutch and brake levers, which is a rare thing on a bike at this price point. Let me go ahead and jump on this bike, show you the dashboard. So obviously this giant loop bag does not come with a bike. And that's something the owner has added there. Very nice handlebar bag. Now the dashboard, so it's the same dashboard as far as I can tell that they use on the more expensive 790s and 890s. Uh, so it's a uh, TFT dashboard and you can do quite a bit of configuration here in terms of what information you want to show. So you have dummy lights here on the sides, then you have a big uh, tachometer, you've got a speedometer, gear position indicator, odometer, and then you've got indications for your ABS and for your traction control. And you can configure the stuff you want to see here if you go into the menus. Uh, also, what I like to do, let me see if this thing has a display theme. I like, okay, I like this better. Now, the owner may disagree with me, he may turn it back, but I like that better, so let's turn it on to that. While we're here, it's got a shift flight, which you can configure. Uh, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna spend too long, the video's gonna get too long, so let's just leave it at that for the dashboard. And you can see here the windshield, um, is it an adjustable windshield? I can't remember. I know the 790 and 890s are, I think it is, but anyway, I think this is in the higher position, and it provides pretty decent wind protection, honestly. And you have a 12 volt outlet here, which is great. If you need to charge your phone or power a GPS, something like that. One thing I love about KTMs is that they have backlit switch gear. I can't tell you, even the like $25,000 BMW GS does not have a lighted switch gear. And at night you can't tell what the hell you're doing. So thank you KTM for doing that. All right, let's go for a ride on the KTM 390 Adventure. Show you how this thing is on the highway and the dirt on the freeway. Let's start this thing up. Dash just boots up really fast there, ready to race. Start the engine, feels pretty nice and smooth. Not much vibration for a single cylinder engine, I like that. One thing I have noticed about this bike is if you take off when the bike is cold like I'm doing now, sometimes the, the fueling will be very strange, jerky, and it'll kind of want to stall out. And uh, that's a known issue with these KTM 390s. That they, that the, it's a bit weird with the fueling when the bike is cold. And the owner of this bike told me that they've had it stall out quite a few times if they don't let it warm up for a few minutes before riding. So one of the first things that you're going to notice if you ride the 390 Adventure is just how light and nimble and small it feels. It feels so much smaller than uh, something like the KTM 890 Adventure that I own. It, it feels very light and compact, very sporty I would say. And it makes a very good street bike which I'm about to show you. So the engine in the 390 is very, very interesting and here's why. So at this RPM, about 4,000 RPM, if I roll on the throttle, there's almost no acceleration. It, it feels very slow at lower RPMs. Now that could be a good or a bad thing, depending on your perspective. It's good for newer riders and it makes the bike pretty gentle, but you feel if you were just to ride it like this and you accelerate, you're like, come on, there's no power. So here's the deal with this engine. I gotta watch out for this truck. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, get this flotsam and jetsam out of the way here. Now, what you're gonna notice is right around, I would say about 6,000 RPM, okay? 
right around 6,000 RPM is where the horsepower comes in. So this bike makes a lot of horsepower for its size, over 40 horsepower, but you wouldn't know it unless you rev the engine. So if you want to be gentle, you can ride like this. Now if you want to really get going, <laughs> very fun. What a great little engine this is. It's got plenty of acceleration, plenty of pickup, uh, especially when you consider the, the price point, the size and the weight of this bike and what it competes with. The handling, the chassis, everything, the brakes are very sporty. I, I'm really surprised. I mean, pitching it through this corner like this, this is really good. Like, this is really fun. <laughs> slow down a little bit so you can hear me over the wind noise the quick shifter so this bike has a quick shifter which uh, is amazing for the price again i can't believe you get that and it works it works really well you can blip through the gears like this no clutch i love having a quick shifter absolutely love it let's talk about the brakes oh okay the brakes will definitely give you a nosebleed no problem with the braking power <laughs> I'm not, I mean, this is I, this is really shocking to me. How good the, I just expected it to be like kind of a budget bike, but man, this chassis is so good. And I, I guess it just proves the point that lightweight is really the way to go. Having less weight makes everything better. Less weight means the brakes work better. It means it accelerates better. It turns corners faster. Uh, it's easier to you know get around at low speeds less weight is the solution to every problem windshield works pretty well keeping the air the air is hitting me about in the bottom of my face shield and you know, i'm sure you can hear that on a video uh, but there's no buffeting it's a smooth wind flow i don't feel wind buffeting so i appreciate that very much okay let's do some acceleration So that run was uh, uphill and I'm already at 5,000 feet elevation above sea level. So that's probably a worst case scenario acceleration. Um, but, and it still does really well. I mean, you can see it still gets up to 7580 even under those conditions. All right, I'm in the blazing hot desert in the middle of August and I just finished waiting for this freight train which seemed to take forever. Now we're gonna jump on the freeway and here in the USA where I live, freeway traffic moves fast here in the western, in the western United States. And we are going to see how the 390 copes with that. With 43 horsepower, it should have more than enough horsepower to keep up with high speed traffic. Unlike its competitors, the 300 Rally, the Royal Enfield Himalayan, 310 GS, bikes like that. So. We're gonna get a lot of wind noise, so I apologize, but let's get this thing up to speed. There's 86, 87 miles an hour, and this thing is still accelerating. This thing will definitely touch 100 miles per hour, uh, which is awesome for a bike in this category. So let me slow down here. If I travel about the speed limit, which is 70 miles per hour, I'm at 6,000 RPM. But realistically, uh, there's no problem know going 75 80 miles an hour so 80 miles an hour is 7,000 rpm here and there's really hardly any vibration I'm shocked for a single cylinder engine how smooth it really is see how fast yeah, I told you freeway traffic moves fast this guy is going 
90, 92, 95 miles an hour. You know, and the speed limit here is actually 60 because it's a construction zone. That's just how people don't care about the law here in California when they're driving. See that guy, he's going 90 or 100 miles an hour. You think we don't have traffic circles in the USA, huh? We have a few. I don't know why we don't have more. They're a lot better than the damn stoplights that we have everywhere. So go jumping around town like this, this is a great, a great urban bike for doing stuff like this. Really, really enjoyable. Very light, flickable, nimble, it's low to the ground. You can see over traffic, sits tall enough. So yeah, I have no, no complaints about this as sort of an urban runner. All right, let's get the 390 Adventure off-road and see how she is. So, let's just r start riding and I'll give you my sort of experience here. So it's got a pretty nice low first gear for crawling along here off-road. I can crawl down to about five, six miles an hour and put along. So that's good. So here's the deal with the with the 390 Adventure off-road, okay? There's some things going in its favor and some things definitely going against it. So, what does it have going in its favor? Well, what it has in its favor is it's small and light and nimble and it's not intimidating to ride and it's low to the ground. So that's going in its favor, right? Uh, if 370 pounds or whatever it is, it's very light for an adventure bike. What are the things going against it? Well, it doesn't have a ton of ground clearance, so you have to be careful not to hit any really big obstacles. There's two other main things. One is that the engine is not particularly well suited for off-road. It Because it doesn't have really much low-end grunt, I mean, it's fine, it's not really a problem. It's just, if you wanna kinda of break the, the steer with the rear tire, get a little bit more advanced or get a little bit more aggressive with it, um, you really have to rev the engine out, just like we were showing on the street, right? The other thing going against it, and the main, the main complaint I have with the 390 Adventure when taking it off-road, is that if you wanna to start to ride a little bit faster, which this bike does encourage, is that, you really start to feel that the suspension is very stiff and quite bouncy and it's worse if you're riding ah, like that if you're hitting rocks and things like that nature uh, this trail is actually pretty torn up I usually don't do my videos here but I thought it'd be good for a change um, so the suspension is bouncy and stiff now what does that mean well it's doable you could definitely do a lot of off-roading with this bike and you'll be okay it's just not a plush ride right and you notice that more in choppy terrain rocks and when you start to pick up the pace but if you're riding at a more sedate pace just sort of you know touring and just kind of putting around a little bit and exploring and you're not trying to get super aggressive then the 390 is amazing it, it changes direction super fast it's just easy to ride and it's fun, just like on the street, that, that fun does translate to off-road. But what I, what I find is that, uh, so I'm kind of of two minds of the suspension. One, I'm proud of KTM for not underspringing it and under damping it like most bikes. You know, something like the 300L Rally, just on that stuff I was hitting back there, I would have bottomed out the 300L Rally. It's comically bad. The 310GS is bad. The Royal Enfield Himalayan is, is actually pretty good, actually, with the suspension on the Himalayan. So, what if I stand up? Oh yeah, so here's my, here's my third big complaint off-road. It's these damn foot pegs. Pardon my French, but the foot pegs, they're angled forward. And I showed this in the tour and the walk around, but my God, what it does is that you can't, you see, I'm trying to, when you're off-roading and standing standing up, you, you want your feet to be somewhat level, right? 
and this bike is the only bike I've ridden where the damn pegs are angled forward so it forces your it forces your boot your whole foot to be angled down towards the ground and that's just idiotic I, I don't get that and is something that thankfully I believe could be addressed easily by just swapping out the foot pegs for an aftermarket peg with a corrected angle um, I sure hope that's the case because that would be a deal breaker for me if it wasn't um, but yeah so when you're sitting down the foot peg angle is fine it's when you stand up that you notice that angle and it really sucks okay there's some big rocks here um, but overall the 390 adventure riding off-road it's very very it's very good very capable a lot more capable than than you might suspect for sort of a budget oriented kind of bike and uh, I would be very happy to do this I would be very happy to use this as as an adventure bike for fire roads and things like this it works really really well and because of the size and the weight is so much smaller than the big adventure bikes like this trail right here it gets pretty difficult up ahead i'm not showing that yet but i would not take like a 1200 gs on this trail no there's no way um too big too heavy too intimidating it's just not enjoyable even though it's technically possible this bike yeah i mean rip it up it's fine it's it's great because again it's so small and light it just it's not intimidating yeah, see if I start to ride any faster, ooh, that's a big rock. Start to ride any faster than this, uh, the suspension starts to get really, really rowdy and really unhappy with me. But look how I can just chuck this around, and I'm not even on knobby tires. This is such, so much more fun than a big adventure bike off-road. In some ways, this is even more fun than my 890, to be honest. And I can ride this through these bigger, these bigger whoops and bigger bumps without bottom, I'm not bottoming it out. That's so impressive. That's so impressive. Most bikes I would be totally bottoming out through here. And this one doesn't. So maybe that's the trade-off with the suspension being a little bit stiffer. So I've got that traction control off now so I don't feel the throttle cutting out when I'm going up these, these hills. Anyway, let's get back to the house and start to wrap up this review. All right, so I hope you really all enjoyed going on that ride for me as much as I enjoyed it. So let's talk about the competitors to this bike. What are the direct competitors that you might be cross shopping? So there's really six main competitors that I think this bike really goes up against. First is the BMW G310GS. We've got the Honda CB500X, the Royal Enfield Himalayan. We've got Honda CRF300L Rally, which I'm actually doing a full test on right now. We've got Kawasaki's versus X300. And of course, we've got the Kawasaki KLR650. Let's start with the BMW. So I did a full test of the 310GS very recently on my channel and I'll link that somewhere here. Go watch that if you're interested. The BMW does not feel as good a quality as this. It feels quite cheap. The suspension is very bouncy and very soft. It's not as good on road or off road as this bike. And overall for the money, this thing will run circles around the 310GS. Sorry, I'm just telling you like it is. Now I like the little BMW. I think it's a good little bike. This is just a lot better. Let's talk about Honda CB500X. That's a very well-respected bike and one of my favorite adventure bikes for sure. So the Honda has a bit more power and torque. So it uses a twin cylinder engine, a parallel twin. So it's, it's smoother than this, although not a ton smoother. This is actually pretty smooth for what it is. Uh, the Honda is a little bit better like on the highway, you know, if you need to cruise a lot, like 75, 80 miles an hour. Although this thing is not very far behind. One thing on the Honda that you wanna note is that it's not quite as good off-road as this. And this is also a lot lighter. This is like 60 pounds lighter than the CB500X. And that's a big, big deal. It makes this bike feel faster than it really has any right to be, handle better than it should. And really, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at the 500X, you really should be looking at this too. Let's talk about the Royal Enfield Himalayan. So I'm actually doing a full test on that right now. I'm just going into production for that. So that'll be coming out soon. The Royal Enfield has a lot of character, has a lot of charm. I get why people like it. It's also got a 21 inch front wheel, a little bit better for going over obstacles off road. Uh, the suspension on the Royal Enfield is softer, it's more plush, so you don't get the bouncy ride that you do with this. Uh, but the Royal Enfield is not sporty at all. It's slow. The engine has decent torque and it's, it's predictable, but it's slow. This thing will run circles around it. Um, 
on the street and off-road, although the Royal Enfield rides a little bit more plush, this thing, you can ride this thing faster, in my opinion, anyway. The other thing about the Royal Enfield is that you're really limited to 65 or 70 miles per hour or around 110 uh, kph, and that's a real, that's kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people like me who need to travel at 80 or 85 miles an hour to keep up with traffic, as we've shown this bike can do. What about the Versus X300? Well, unfortunately, I have no experience with that. Kawasaki doesn't have one in their uh, press fleet. I've asked for it. Uh, maybe we'll get one next year. And I don't know anybody who owns one. It's just a rare bike, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to test it. What about Honda CRF 300L Rally? So I'm doing a full video series on that bike now called ADV Lite, where I'm doing upgrades to it to see how good we can make it. Here's the differences in a nutshell. The Honda has a much more plush, longer travel suspension. It's a taller motorcycle than this. It's a little bit better off-road for riding through rough terrain because it's got that more suspension. The Honda's a little bit lighter. On the highway, whether it's twisty roads or freeway, I would take this bike any day. This bike has more power, it handles better, has better brakes, better suspension. Uh, a lot of things like that. So the Honda's a bit more of a dual sport with like a windshield and a little bit larger tank. And this is more of kind of like a street bike that can do some off-roading. I hope that makes sense. Now the Honda's very limiting in my opinion because number one, the suspension is horribly soft. And number two, it can't go over about 70 miles per hour in real world conditions. And we showed this thing can go almost 100. So that's a huge difference to me. Uh, but they're very different bikes and the Honda still has a lot of appeal. Now, what about Kawasaki's KLR650? Oh boy, the KLR is its own beast, right? The KLR is way heavier than this. Uh, it's about, what is that, 80 pounds heavier? Uh, the, and it feels it, it feels 80 pounds heavier than this bike. It's taller, it's not as good for shorter riders or newer riders. I think for beginner riders, this is way better than a KLR. The KLR is like a pack mule, you can load a lot of stuff on it. The engine, while it has actually less horsepower than this bike, um, it has more torque, so it's got that low-end torque that kind of pulls you along. The suspension on the Kawasaki is, is plush. It rides very smooth off-road, um, which is not like this. Um, but overall, if you told me, like, right now, you have to buy this or KLR, I'd buy this every single day of the week. It's just more fun. All right, let's quickly cover or recap the pros and cons to this bike. We've talked about a lot of this, so I'm gonna gloss it really fast. What are the pros? Number one for me, fun. It's engaging, it's fun to ride. That's what I like about motorcycles. That's why I ride motorcycles, and this fits that bill. It's a very good street bike. It's a far better street bike uh, than I expected. It has a lot of power, handles great, so agile, very fun to ride on the road. Off-road, it's also very, very capable. And uh, also the value. So the value is great on this bike. I mean, TFT dash, switchable ABS, switchable traction control, uh, quick shifter, you know, it, it's an amazing value for the money. I don't even know how they do it. Really, really good. And nothing on this bike really feels cheap. What are the downsides to the KTM? Well, they're certainly there and we've talked about them. The foot peg angle is all screwed up. I don't know why they did that. Uh, the seat is kind of stiff and hard. Uh, the bike is tall, even though the seat height seems low, it's actually really tall because you've got a wide seat. So we've talked about the suspension. Overall, I, I get what KTM did with the suspension. It's very supportive and you can load some weight on this bike, but it makes it a little bit stiff and bouncy off-road. You will get used to it, but it's not a plush ride like some bikes might be. And of course, finally, we've, we've shown this, but the bike doesn't have a lot of low end power. So you have to rev the bike out to get the power. That could be a good or bad thing, depending on your perspective. I think I've gotten used to it. I like it. It's a gentle power delivery off-road when you're trying to put around. And then when you want to rev out and go faster, like on the street, you can do that. Final thoughts on KTM's 390 Adventure. This bike proves to me more than anything else that small adventure bikes are the future. They make so much more sense than big bikes if you're gonna go off-road. If you told me I had to choose, if I was on a rough trail and I had to choose between this and a 1200 GS or Super Tenere or a KTM 1290 or anything like that, it would be this every day. Even though this is technically an inferior bike or, or a budget bike or all of that, it's more fun to ride. And because it's light, it's playful. It's not intimidating. And I've talked about this in other videos, like when I did the G310 GS, these bikes are really, uh, they're worth their weight in gold. And if, if smaller adventure bikes are the movement going forward, and I hope they are, I think they are, um, then I'm super, super excited because bikes like this, this bike's already great. It does have some downsides, but the potential is there. And I think if KTM and other companies keep developing these smaller adventure bikes, 300s, 400s, 500s, that's the wave of the future. Uh, and, I, and I'm really, really excited for it. I think it's gonna benefit all of us. We're gonna have more fun riding off-road, but still be able to do some highway riding as well, which is why we have adventure bikes. So I sincerely hope this review was useful. I hope it was informative. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto. And there's so many ways to do that down in the description below. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Please ride safe and I'll see you out there.